Hello everyone and welcome to Muffman TCG. My name is Alex Baker and today we're going to be going over items and tool cards. So the, these two types of cards can be played at any time and uh, we're going to be ranking them from best to worst into a tier list of S, A, B, C, and F. Stupid good, admirable, balanced, credible, and forget it. We actually did the same thing for supporters already so you can go ahead and take a look at that video if you'd like to to get a feel for how this is going to work in a series uh, for ranking pretty much every trainer and all of the good Pokemon in, in the Pokemon TCG for the team up to Darkness Ablaze format. So we're going to start off with the items and then we're going to jump into the tool cards and uh, it should be a, an enjoyable journey. So when it comes to items, we really have to try and figure out what Pokemon's purpose for that item is. Because we can play items at any point, uh, we can play them for essentially no cost most of the time. There, there's not a limit to the number of items that we can play. So uh, we essentially just have to figure out which items are going to be valid to put into our deck, which ones are going to help us out, and which ones we can use when we have access to them. So we don't just want to be blindly putting in items, even though we can play as many as we want. We want to build our decks as consistently as possible, and the items are the most, probably the most flexible source of cards that we get in our deck here. So we're going to start out here with the ball search. Uh, I've put all the ball search to the beginning just because <clears throat> I want to make sure that we compare all of the ball search to one another. And uh, when I say ball search, I mean uh, whenever we're going to actually search out a Pokemon from our deck, um, that is what's traditionally called ball search. You'll see a lot of these have the shape of a ball. Uh, traditionally, most of them do, um, but you know, in the latest sets, we get some, uh, some other types of shapes here, not just the uh, spherical ball. All right, so the first item that we're going to be encountering here is the Electromagnetic Radar. So Electromagnetic Radar allows you to discard two cards from your hand, and you go and search for two EX or GX Lightning Pokemon. Now, obviously, we don't have any EX Pokemon in the format, so we're going to ignore that. The GX Pokemon, however, there's one very special GX Pokemon that a lot of people are probably familiar with, and that's Dedenne GX. So this can always go and find Dedenne GX. And it always synergizes with discarding cards. So you see this card played actually in Mewtwo sometimes. You see this card played uh, exclusively in Picarom, actually. <laughs> Obviously, Picarom has a lot of GX uh, Pokemon that it can go and search for. But this electromagnetic radar, unfortunately, isn't very flexible outside of the, <clears throat> outside of the lightning decks, with the exception of decks that kind of synergize with discarding. Um, so you might see this pop up every now and again. Uh, it's definitely between the B and C tiers, the balanced and the credible tiers here. But I think that we just have better ball search in the format right now. So I think I'm going to throw it down into the C tier. Um, this could move up to the B tier if we... Um, well, I guess it'll never really move up. It can only really go down because we don't really have any more GX Pokemon coming out. So this never gets better. But it, it could move into the balanced tier if Picaram starts to do better in the format. So Cherish Ball allows you to just, for, for no cost at all, no, no discarding or anything like that, you just go get to find a GX Pokemon out of your deck. Um, now this is definitely one of the best types of ball search that we have. Um, back in the black and white era, we had a card called Master Ball. You could only play one of them in your deck. It was called an Ace Spec Trainer. Uh, and it, it just allowed you to go get grab any Pokemon. Now obviously this is uh, specific for GX Pokemon, but it is extremely powerful in decks like Mewtwo. Even decks like uh, Picaram played it a lot to, to just find those GX Pokemon that you're so dependent on. Now, in the later sets, obviously, we've been coming out with these Pokemon V, Pokemon V Max that are not searchable with this card. So Cherish Ball has kind of fallen to the wayside. Uh, normally, this would be definitely up in the S or the A tiers, but I think because half the format right now is pretty much revolving around finding these V Pokemon, getting our V Max out, um, the Cherish Ball is really just kind of falling to the wayside <clears throat> in that it doesn't allow us to search exactly what we need. Obviously, it can go get us a Dedenne GX, it can go get us other support Pokemon, but it doesn't get us the main attackers, it doesn't accelerate our board fast enough to warrant playing most of the time. 
Tag Call is like Cherish Ball times two, except it only allows us to go get Tag Pokemon. Now, it also allows us to go get Tag Supporters. It actually, the, the text reads, you can go get two of any Tag Team cards from your deck. Uh, no cost, you just go and search for two cards. One card for two cards as an item is insanely good. Uh, unfortunately, this this is localized for the tag team GXs that came out and the tag team supporters that came out. Um, but honestly, this is probably the best quality ball search that the Pokemon TCG has ever seen. Uh, getting two things, even a supporter. You you think of the popularity of Tapu Lele if you played back in that format, or uh, Jirachi EX if you played in that format. Um, this tag call allows you to get a supporter for an item for no cost and a Pokemon or two supporters or two Pokemon. Uh, so this card inherently is insanely good in any in any deck that plays uh, tag teams or even any deck that can utilize the tag supporters. We're going to be considering this tag call. Uh, I think the tag call is it's going to go in the A tier just because we can't consider it in every deck. But uh, in any deck that can consider tag Pokemon or tag supporters, uh, this will be definitely a resource that we're going to be uh, tapping into quite often. All right, Pokemon Communication allows you to uh, shuffle a Pokemon from your hand into your deck and then find any Pokemon that you find uh, from your deck and put it into your hand. So it just allows you to trade one Pokemon from your hand uh, and swap it with one in your deck. And uh, this is actually a really good effect right now specifically because we don't have a good way, or I should say we don't have a flexible way to find evolution Pokemon. Now there, the next, uh, the next card I'm going to be talking about allows us to grab only evolution Pokemon, but the thing about Pokemon communication is it allows you to get basic Pokemon and evolution Pokemon in one card. Uh, so this works in, in the very first turn of the game, it works in the second turn of the game, it works in every turn of the game as far as getting whatever Pokemon you want with the stipulation that you need a Pokemon in your hand. So you really have to play enough Pokemon in your deck to be able to use this card, to be able to utilize this card to its fullest potential at every moment in the game. So we have to keep in mind that when we're playing this card, our Pokemon count has to be high. We can't be playing like a Baby Blacephalon that only plays eight basic Pokemon and play this card because we're never gonna have Pokemon or we're not gonna consistently have Pokemon in our hand to trade with Pokemon in our deck. So for that reason, it's gonna go into the Admirable category. Uh, I think for almost every deck that has a VMAX specifically uh, or any deck that requires evolution, Pokemon communication is gonna be our go-to uh, for the search for those types of evolution Pokemon. Evolution Incense is actually kind of similar to Cherish Ball in that you just get to go and find an Evolution Pokemon. You just use this card for no cost. You don't have to trade a Pokemon from your hand. You don't have to discard any cards from your hand. Um, you just get to go search for an Evolution Pokemon. The stipulation with this card, kind of similar to the Cherish Ball, is that it is only for a specific type of card, an Evolution card. So this can go grab your V Maxes. It can go grab uh, your GX Pokemon that are evolution based. Uh, it can go grab your your stage two, your stage one Pokemon. So whenever we're building a deck, this is a consideration. The unfortunate thing is that it cannot go and grab the basic Pokemon. So when we're in our beginning stages of the game, namely the first turn, if we are trying to evolve our Pokemon, we have to have something to evolve from. Therefore, we have to have something on our bench. We have to have ball support that is consistent enough to get things onto our bench. So Evolution Incense, very powerful card, a very powerful ball search. However, unfortunately, it's only localized to the Evolution Pokemon, therefore it isn't as powerful as, as, it leads, as we lead it to believe. So for that reason, I'm going to throw it down into the credible category. It is a very, very good uh, ball search, don't get me wrong, but it's unfortunately not flexible enough to play in most decks. The only deck that plays this right now is actually, uh, I believe, Mad Party. Mad Party is using this specifically to go get their Mr. Rhymes so that they can discard them, and it's going to get them the Poltegeist 
to evolve up and start attacking. So, uh, it, so in in decks that play this card, you're probably playing a lot of other ball search, and this is more of like a a third or even a fourth source of ball search. So it's not always going to be used in uh, in these evolution based decks, but it can be if there aren't those types of resources available, or if you've already tapped out all of the four spots for the ball search that you want to use. Great Ball has been around for a long time. So Great Ball allows you to look at the top seven cards of your deck and pull any Pokemon you find there and put it into your hand. So it's kind of like a Max Elixir, but for Pokemon, and the Pokemon luckily goes into your hand and not directly onto the field. So uh, this is right now probably the most flexible ball search that we have. Um, things like Pokemon Communication obviously can grab any card, but it it requires a Pokemon to be available in our hand already. So when we're playing a deck that doesn't have a whole lot of uh, Pokemon, we can actually use this Great Ball and uh, it, it kind of optimize our chance of having what we need when we need it. Uh, obviously, Pokemon Communication allows you to dig into your entire deck rather than just the top seven cards but Great Ball doesn't require a Pokemon to already be in your hand. Um, so we're always going to be kind of tossing back and forth between the Great Ball and the Pokemon Communication. Therefore, I'm going to put the Great Ball kind of in the same category, or the same power level as Pokemon Communication. Those two will be kind of interchangeable as we uh, start to build our decks. Quick Ball. Right now, in the current format, Basics run the format. Uh, so Quick Ball allows you to discard one card from your hand and go find a basic Pokemon and put it into your hand. So that could be Dedenne, it could be Crobat, it could be Eldegoss, it could be the, ev the, the basic to the evolution that you're going to be playing, it could be your attacker. It can really be anything in the format besides an evolution Pokemon. Uh, and right now, evolution Pokemon are pretty much non-existent with the exception of VMAXs. So Quick Ball is going to be placed in almost every deck. I'm putting it in the S tier. Um, this could change if we get a different type of ball search. I think the only ball search that's more powerful than this is uh, Ultra Ball, uh, which obviously doesn't exist right now. But uh, if Ultra Ball were to come back in the format, it would definitely displace Quick Ball pretty easily um, as it would be much more flexible and we'd be able to really grab anything that we want out of our decks. But uh, for any deck that's purely... Uh, tag team based or any deck that is e even evolution based uh, quick ball is going to allow us to always get the basic pokemon down onto our bench and uh, utilize either abilities effects power it up on the first turn of the game quick ball is just the best type of ball search that we have all right pokeball so uh, pokeball allows you to on a coin flip go search for any pokemon in your deck uh, now Coin flips are very kind of discouraged because they are inherently random. Uh, you can play this card, but you're on average only going to be able to, if I, if I play four of these, I'm only going to be able to use the card twice. I'm going to be playing four of them, but I'm only going to be using two of them. And that requires that I flip uh, heads. You know, it, it's there's a lot of cards that have an effect that's powerful enough to forego the coin flip. Um, but I think Pokemon Search in general, we have a lot of cards that we can utilize uh, to our advantage for Pokemon Search. And Pokeball on a coin flip is just too random. Although you do get to go find any Pokemon when you do flip heads, it's almost like a Master Ball in that, in that sort of regards. But only doing it 50% of the time is really not good enough. And we have much better outs to finding Pokemon in the current format. So I think Pokeball is going to be alone as our ball surge down in the F tier. And then finally we have Familiar Bell. So Familiar Bell, kind of uh, definitely an interesting card. I think Pokemon did a good job with uh, designing this card. It allows you to go grab any Pokemon from your deck that has a similar name to a Pokemon in your discard pile. So what that means for you is, you know, if you're playing for a, 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 a quad count of a lot of different Pokemon, things like Mad Party can take advantage of this. Uh, when those when those cards get discarded, this is a free ball search for that specific Pokemon. Uh, we've seen this, a similar effect in the past. I, I'm blanking on the name of the card, but uh, we've seen this kind of card in the past, and it, unfortunately, it's it's not 
consistent enough to see play you have to have that pokemon in the discard it's kind of like pokemon communication in that regards uh, but you have to have the pokemon in the discard and you have to have that exact pokemon in the discard which is fine i mean it, it doesn't cost anything to play which is great it's fantastic we don't have to lose hand advantage just because uh we're playing this ball search but it doesn't allow us to get pokemon when we need it especially on the first turn of the game that's kind of the theme that we've played out with all these ball search options can we play it on the first turn of the game to get whatever pokemon we need uh, or if we're going for evolutions can we play it on the second turn of the game consistently to get whatever we need unfortunately familiar bell you have to have that pokemon in the discard which means that you have to have already gone through your deck and discarded some of the pokemon that you would want to grab so Familiar Bell, I think, is going to have some niche uses, um, like Mad Party right now. Uh, there are definitely instances where this might be played, but right now in the current format is definitely in the lower power. And that's it for the ball search. So now we're going to jump into some of the other items that we have available to us. The item slot is Pokemon's way of telling us that um, these, these cards are flexible we have a lot of options as far as putting items into our deck and we can play as many of these options as we want to but in order to build a top tier deck we need to really pick and choose which of these items are more important than the others so starting out here with dangerous drill uh, dangerous drill is actually kind of like field blower from the sun and moon era dangerous drill only for a darkness pokemon you have to discard a darkness pokemon from your hand and you go get to uh you get to discard and a, your opponent's special energy tool or stadium uh, so it's like field blower and an enhanced hammer all in one with the cost being that you have to discard a darkness pokemon now there's no <laughs> there's no surprise that uh that this card has crept into eternatus but unfortunately it's not really useful in a whole lot of other decks we have really three main support Pokemon that exist in the format. There's Crobat, there's Zigzagoon, and there's Absol. Uh, all three of those are good options, but unfortunately it's going to be really tough and we're going to have to spend a lot of resources to get those Pokemon and Dangerous Drill into the same hand. So in Eternatus exactly, Dangerous Drill is a really good card which uh, is going to push it into the C tier, but I don't think it's good enough to get up into into the the higher tiers if you play a live darkness pokemon this could see play um, i know a couple of picaram lists played uh played like absol they played um like spiritomb they they went out of the out of their way to play darkness pokemon so that they could play this card uh, especially in the format before tool scrapper um right now we have tool scrapper available to us but before then, uh, we had no way to get rid of tools. <laughs> I think there were like maybe a couple of abilities that allowed us to do that, but they were so insanely inefficient that it, it just didn't make sense to play those. So Dangerous Drill, we can play it if we really want to, but we're going to have to go out of our way and we're going to have to spend a lot of resources in order to build around this card. And, and usually it's just not worth it. Electro Charger, you need to flip two coins and add Electro Powers from your discard pile into your hand. We don't have Electro Powers. This is an F tier card. <laughs> Very simply. Judge Whistle. Uh, so Judge Whistle is kind of interesting in that it is a dual effect item. And we've seen dual effect items run rampant in the format. Uh, we've seen Custom Catcher. We've seen Puzzle of Time. Um, these types of items are so good uh, that it's always worth looking at an item when it has a dual effect. Now, Judge Whistle's dual effect is either you get to put a Judge from your discard pile into your hand, uh, which is fine. I mean, we, we already saw that with Tag Call, supporter-based recovery or supporter-based search is really good. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have Judge in the format anymore. Uh, this uh, Judge might make a comeback, but I think Pokemon has done pretty well to do away with a lot of the shuffle effects that are occurring in the format. So I don't know if Judge will actually come back. We have an alternative in marnie right now and uh, i just don't see a need for judge to come back so i don't think judge whistle will ever see play the other effect of judge whistle is that you get to draw a card uh, so you get to trade this card for another card 
Now we've seen this card kind of creep up in some of these decks that have to go insanely fast. Um, they would play four acro bikes, they'd play four judge whistles, they'd play all of these items that you could just immediately play down from your hand and draw cards and go as fast to your deck as you possibly can. Um, but unfortunately, Judge Whistle is going to fall to the wayside um, because its effect is really just not good enough. We actually even have better cards than, than both of Judge Whistle's uh, effects in one card. So it, it really just kind of falls flat, and I don't think it'll ever get out of that rut. Return label allows you to put a uh, card from your opponent's discard pile on the bottom of their deck. Um, I think Pokemon was trying to be cute with this uh, in certain decks that would allow you to constantly discard your opponent's deck, and uh, you'd really just get to, to make your opponent's deck really inconsistent because you'd be putting all these cards that they don't want in their discard pile into their deck. So it was a way for you to kind of disrupt your opponent um, but unfortunately, a lot of the disruption decks depend on deck out in order to actually win the game. And this kind of goes against that strategy. So for that reason, the return label is never seen play, and I don't think it ever will. Unidentified Fossil is uh, kind of a... It's actually a Pokemon in an item format. Uh, and I think this is actually a really interesting strategy that Pokemon employed ever since, you know, Fossil in the, uh, in the base to Neo format. And Unidentified Fossil just acts as a basic Pokemon, but because it's not a, an actual Pokemon, you can't start it on your, in your active spot. So you have to, you have to play Pokemon other than ident Unidentified Fossils in your deck so that you can start a Pokemon in the active position, and then you have to find this Unidentified Fossil somehow. We used to have some good search options for Unidentified Fossil, but uh, right now there actually aren't any. And that kind of makes Unidentified Fossil a little bit worse. Um, now, actually starting out, they used to have fossils for each type of Pokemon, which made things so difficult to actually run through your deck. You'd have to play so many search cards, you have to play so many thinning cards in order to find these items because there's not an item-based item find, So, <laughs> if that makes sense. So there, there's not a good way to search out items from your deck you have to really draw into them in order to actually utilize them so uh, unfortunately unidentified fossil there are a lot of powerful effects things like aerodactyl gx you have oma star which blocks items you have kabutops which blocks supporters when it's in the active you have even carablast that can uh, shut off your opponent's tool cards that was really our only way to shut off tool cards before tool scrapper was a thing uh, so there's a lot of uses for unidentified fossil it's just unfortunately too bulky or too inconsistent to play uh, unless it's its own deck there is a so there's a stadium currently called fossil excavation something or fossil research lab or, or something like that um, that allows you to go grab two pokemon that evolve from unidentified fossil but they, but you know you never actually grab this unidentified fossil card so um this card specifically is not really viable in the current format. Uh, if you wanted to play a, a like an item lock, you would have to play this card with an Omastar. You'd have to find those somehow, uh, and unfortunately, right now it's just kind of uh, it's just really difficult to find those cards. All right, Chip Chip Ice Axe definitely notorious for the control type decks when you're trying to uh, kind of control what your opponent draws. You get to look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck. You choose one of them to put on the deck, and your opponent shuffles the other two into their deck. Um, so what this does is it allows you to control what your opponent draws on the next turn of the game. Uh, and this is extremely powerful. Hand-locking decks really, really like this card uh, because you know you, once you discard your opponent's resources, you know what they're going to draw into, and you know what you can play off of at that point. So if you go and search for cards out of your deck, you already know what your opponent is going to have on the following turn, uh, and this card just allows for kind of a looping strategy. It enables the whole hand control sort of strategy. So I think Chip Chip Ice Axe as a control card is good enough to put into the A tier, um, but unfortunately it's kind of isolated 
in that it is a control type card. So I'm going to throw it down in the B tier. Um, not necessarily because it's balanced, but because it's really good in certain decks, but unfortunately not really usable in others. Devolution Spray Z allows you to devolve one of your evolution Pokemon and you shuffle that Pokemon into your deck. Um, now this kind of plays off of Devolution Spray back from Evolutions, but unfortunately shuffling the Pokemon into your deck means that you have to go and find it the following turn if you want to reutilize the effect. The big thing with Devolution Spray was that you could bring that bring that card back up to your hand and then replay it down. So I, in the expanded format, things like Shock Lock really needed to have those resources still in their hand in order to paralyze you or uh, in order to loop these effects that that these Pokemon can um, that these Pokemon can put out. Now we've seen actually Mill decks. Uh, play the Alolan Muck, and the Alolan Muck allows you to look at your the top six cards of your opponent's deck, and you get to discard any items, so that's an effect that you would want to loop over and over again, but it's not something that you need to loop every turn, so that's where the Devolution Spray Z kind of comes into play. Uh, I'm going to throw it into the... Uh, I Normally I would throw it into the Credible category, but we actually have another Pokemon, or we have another card that really acts just better than this card, and, and we'll talk about that later. All right, Dust Stone allows us to break the rules of evolution. It allows us to, on the first turn of the game, go grab a, a certain type of Pokemon that would normally evolve from Dust Stone, that being Miss Magius, Honchkrow, Chandelure, Aegislash, and any of the GX versions of those cards. So, uh, so you you would just get to go grab a one of those cards, and you would just evolve it right away. With this item so this is almost like a ball surge in the fact that you get to go search your deck for a pokemon um, but it only works for certain pokemon so i didn't really want to loop it in with the ball search because it is so specific to a certain group of pokemon um this match just actually got banned probably because of this card specifically uh, i think that just allowing you to draw up to seven cards while giving your opponent a prize enabling supporters like your lieutenant surge giving you a whole lot of options during the next turn, and it's a draw support Pokemon as well. I think those that, that number of effects is just too powerful, and I think Pokemon just wanted to get rid of it, uh, which is why it's now banned. So the other Pokemon really don't have a good use for this. Um, I'm going to put it in the C tier just in case uh, a card like uh, Chandelure. We know that there's a couple of Chandelure cards that are pretty good, um, Honshkrow GX was a thing for a little while. Uh, these types of cards can utilize the Dust Stone to pretty good effect, but uh, right now none of them are super prevalent in the format. So I'm going to throw this into the C tier with hopes that it gets uh, that it sees play eventually. Energy Spinner allows us to. This is actually a card that we were waiting for for a long time. Uh, I think Pokemon actually delayed it so that it would be in this format and not in the last format, so that it didn't rotate. Um, they could have put it one set earlier, I guess, but uh, uh, this coming out of the Unbroken Bond set allows you to go search for any energy card out of your deck, but if it's on the first turn of the game and you're going second, you get to search for three energy cards instead. Um, now, we've seen this played a lot in the ADP list just because they do play two different types of energies, so this gives you the flexibility to go find either of those depending on which one you need, especially if you go and attach a metal energy your first turn. You can find this energy spinner and go uh, search for your, your water energy on the next turn. Now the the effect of drawing three energies on the second turn of the game is very specific. It can be helpful in certain niche scenarios. Uh, it gives you a little bit of flexibility. It's not really necessary. We actually have a card that is exactly energy spinner without the additional effects. Um, but Energy Spinner can be actually really nice in, in most decks. It's probably the best energy search we have right now, uh, with the exception of some of the uh, some of the Stadium cards that we have currently. But uh, I think Energy Spinner, I'm going to throw it into the B tier. Uh, it's definitely going to creep into the A tier for, for the format, depending on how much energy search we actually need. Um, we're moving a little bit away from basic energy uh, purity, I'll say. <laughs> Uh, we, we do have a lot of decks that rely on special energies now, 
So energy spinner kind of loses its functionality, loses its niche when special energies kind of come into the format. But um, I think it is definitely a, an extremely balanced card. And that's why it's going to go into the balanced category. Now fire crystal, uh, we already know that welder from the last video that I did, welder is a very powerful effect and uh, it allows you to attach two fire energies from your hand to your Pokemon and then you can attach a third one. Well, Fire Crystal goes and search your, searches your discard pile, not your deck, but your discard pile for three fire energy cards and put them into your hand. So you go Fire Crystal, Welder, Attach, and boom, you have three energies on your field. You've accelerated your field extremely efficiently. So Fire Crystal is, uh, unfortunately, it's only good in fire decks, but because it's such good energy recovery, I am going to put it into the A tier. We see it in things like Mewtwo. We see it in Baby Blonde. We see it in almost every niche fire deck just because it has such a strong, efficient effect in recovering three energies from your discard pile. Pokegear 3.0. This is, uh, I'm really glad that Pokemon printed this card. It's actually a, a reprint from, a, from the uh, Heart Gold Soul Silver format. Um, it allows you to look at the top seven cards of your deck, kind of like the Great Ball, uh, and it allows you to find a supporter card. Uh, so you get to just kind of search your deck for a supporter uh, and put it into your hand. Unfortunately, you don't get to go search your whole deck for a supporter. You only get to search the top seven cards. So when we play this card, we have to make sure that we're making our deck efficient enough. and We have to make sure that we're either playing enough supporters or we're playing enough thinning cards to take advantage of this card completely. So if we look at the top seven cards of our deck, there's no supporter unfortunately we just wasted this card and possibly if this is the only um possible out to draw and we don't find a draw supporter we are sol there's no way that we can we there's no way we can draw and we're going to be depending on the top deck uh, of or the top card of our deck for the remainder of the game and that can actually put you in a game losing scenario very very easily and for that reason, I think I'm going to throw it into the balanced category. Um, I really, uh, actually, I think I'm going to put it, it's really tough to, to decide between the A and B tiers because in some decks where you don't play a whole lot of supporters or where you really want to get one specific supporter, like Welder, uh, you really, really want to play this card uh, just because we don't have any sort of supporter search outside of tag call but tag call you know you would just always play tag call over this card if uh you know if you're playing tag supporters but if we're going to try and find like a welder or a greens exploration or even like a, a professor's research or a marnie boss whatever uh those effects are so powerful that poke gear actually gets a lot of uh use but sometimes it doesn't get any use so it's almost like a coin flip sometimes uh, when you're trying to go and find a supporter uh, with this card so i think for the reason that it's not always going to find you a supporter it's not consistent enough to find a supporter i'm going to put it in the balance tier but for decks that play a low supporter count or play a supporter that we really really want to get then uh, poke gear is definitely going to be our go-to Surprise Box, uh, this was actually a card Pokemon released specifically, I think, for the Gengar Mimikyu GX tag team. Uh, so this allows you to put a card from your opponent's discard pile into their hand. Kind of like the uh, return label, where it allows you to put a card from your opponent's discard pile onto the bottom of their deck. This allows you to put it into their hand, and Gengar Mimikyu GX's Poltergeist attack allows you to do 50 damage times the number of trainer cards in your opponent's hand so this definitely synergizes with that deck pretty well although it's unfortunately not doing anything except for impacting your opponent and that deck unfortunately doesn't have a whole lot of draw options because most of the time it plays either amistar which you don't want to put a whole lot of pokemon into your bench so you can't really utilize any sort of um support pokemon so honestly, even the deck that this is made for doesn't really play this card, and uh, for that reason it's going to go down into the F tier. I don't think this ever gets out of the F tier, and unless there's some card that synergizes with it in the future. 
Here Ringing Bell is a tool card and I actually forgot to put this into the tools. Uh, unfortunately, in either the tools or in here, this is going to be an F tier card. Uh, if the Pokemon attached to is, is damaged by your opponent's attack, uh, the attacking Pokemon is now confused. Confusion doesn't mean anything in the format right now. Actually, any of the uh, any effects, any status condition besides paralysis is really just unimpactful. I guess poison can put damage counters on in niche scenarios, but uh, confusion, your opponent can even retreat out of confusion. Uh, all, it, all it does is forces a switch, which our format right now is chock full of switches. Every deck is playing switches in very high counts so that you can reset attacks, so that you can get into the active position, and so on. So I think Earring Bell is just, even though it is a tool card, I apologize for uh, for kind of putting this a little premature to the, the tool cards we're going to be talking about later. Earring Bell is an F tier card. All right, Great Potion. Uh, Great Potion and Cherish Ball got released at the same time. Great Potion allowing you to heal 50 damage from your Pokemon GX. Uh, Cherish Ball allowing you to go find your Pokemon GX. So when Pokemon GX were kind of running rampant in the format, when Mewtwo was big, when Picaron was big, Great Potion allowed you to heal 50 damage, which is not inconsiderable. It is definitely a good amount of heal. Unfortunately, I think Pokemon are hitting hard enough where this 50 damage just isn't really enough to mean uh, to mean enough in the format. So you look at things like Malo and Lana, which I put in the A tier in our supporter category because it actually heals 120 damage, and that is so much. That's almost half of most of the the Pokemon's HP from the previous format. Obviously, we're growing in HP um, due to the power creep. Uh, so Great Potion becoming even less relevant. I think I'm actually just going to throw this down into the F tier. Even for the GX Pokemon, we would probably just want to play Mallow and Lana or a supporter-based heal option uh, rather than this, rather than even an item-based heal. All right, Reset Stamp is a card that's, that probably shaped an entire format before this one. Um, Reset Stamp was in almost every deck. We if you don't know what N was from back in the day, N allowed you to uh, force you and your opponent to shuffle your card, your hand into your deck, and then you each draw for the number of prize cards that you have. And that was an extremely balanced supporter. It allowed for a lot of comebacks, uh, and it was searchable because of things like Tapu Lele, because of things like Jirachi EX. Those allowed you to actually search for those supporters, and it gave you a lot of consistency in that way. Reset Stamp is an item, so there's not really a good way to search for it other than to draw into it. Um, discarding Reset Stamps always feels painful because you want that resource for later in the game to stamp your opponent down to one, uh, really limit their resources to actually win the game. I think Reset Stamp deserves the S tier. Um, in, in almost every deck right now, I think we want to include Reset Stamp. However, it's one of those cards that kind of falls out of lists because you need space. Um, so this is unfortunately one of the first cards to get cut, but it is a super inherently powerful card. Uh, so I am actually going to put it in the stupid good tier. Stadium Nav allows you to flip two coins, and for each coin, for each heads, you get to go search your deck for a stadium card and put it into your hand. Now uh, this is played. This was played exclusively in Picaram to go find your one of Thunder Mountain, um, but it could be played technically in any deck that requires a a stadium to function. I'm thinking like Toxtricity Mill would love this, um, and there are a few others in the format. Unfortunately, right now there's a supporter that goes and and grabs a stadium without having to spend any sort of discard or anything like that without even having to risk getting two tails like this card would um so i think it just by the fact that we have a supporter that can do that if we needed a uh if we needed a stadium that badly we would probably just play the guzma Halo, which coincidentally can be searched out with cat with tag call so um 
Unfortunately, this card's kind of fallen to the wayside. This is an easy way if you can't afford to play the, the Guzma Hell, if you don't have the space for it, then this is a good card or a good alternative. So I'm going to throw it into the C tier. It's not unplayable, but it's not going to be playable in a lot of decks. All right, Tag Switch allows you to move two energy from one of your tag team Pokemon to uh, another one of your Pokemon. So it doesn't have to go to another tag team, but it does have to be from a tag team. Uh, luckily, that means that you get to have uh, the Pokemon with the probably one of the most high HP uh, on your bench holding your energy for you, and then you can use Tag Switch and uh, just start attacking. So uh, this is a really nice card, especially in something like Picaron where you have to hold a lot of energies on your on your bench. It's good for uh, it, well, it was good in ADP when you played a lot of tag team Pokemon. You could go and you could go and ta you could go and use your ultimate ray to grab three energies from your deck, put it onto your bench. Or in Picaram, you could use your full blitz to go get three energies from your deck and put them onto your Pokemon. And then you can use tag switch on the next turn to move those to the Pokemon that would actually be attacking. Unfortunately, this is only useful in the situation where you have energies on your tag team, and we have to assume that that tag team does not get knocked out. Unfortunately, there's a lot of gust in the format, and uh, tag team tag switch. Say you have a tag switch set up in your hand for next turn, your opponent goes boss's orders or great catcher, and uh, knocks out the Pokemon that has all the energy on it. Unfortunately, that's too common of an of an occurrence, and that's going to push this card down into the C tier. If we didn't have so much Gust, I think this card would actually be quite decent. Um, but because this because Gust is so prevalent in the format, and because we usually just want to be powering up one Pokemon or kind of making powering up Pokemon consistent, Tag Switch is just going to fall to the wayside a little bit. All right, Great Catcher. Um, so Great Catcher, I think, also shaped a format. Uh, Great Catcher allows you to discard two cards from your hand and gust in any GX Pokemon or EX Pokemon from your opponent's bench into the active. Um, this is Boss's Orders, but only for GX and EX Pokemon, but also on an item. So we don't even have to spend our supporter to gust around the active Pokemon. This is useful in uh, any deck, or it's useful against any deck that plays Dedenne. Um, Dedenne is probably the, the, the biggest reason why this card is so prevalent in the format right now. And unfortunately, not all decks play Dedenne, so this isn't always a consideration for every deck that we play. But if we're not always wanting to swing into the active, then this great catcher can go and find other Dedenne or some other support Pokemon or maybe an attacker that's sitting on the bench. Um, this great catcher can be a fantastic option for us. All right, so Lana's Fishing Rod allows you to put a Pokemon and a tool card from your discard pile back into your deck. Now, recovering resources has always been good, um, but unfortunately we do have a card that is just better than this. Um, now, obviously, it, it, we don't have the ability to put tool cards back in the deck, so if we, if our deck relies on a tool card, or if we really need a tool card to be recycled, or maybe if we need five copies of a tool card, then Lana's Fishing Rod is a good option for us. So I'm going to throw it into the C tier, but uh, likely this card doesn't really ever see play, unless, again, unless we require uh, five of the same tool card in our deck. All right, Lily's Pokédoll. Um, so this is another one of those item-based uh, Pokémon substitute sort of cards, kind of like uh, the unident unidentified fossil. The cool thing about Lily's Pokédoll is when you knock it out, your opponent doesn't get any, or when your opponent knocks it out, uh, you, your opponent doesn't get any prize cards. So stall decks use this quite often in order to uh, either stall for a turn or to prevent their opponent from taking prizes. Usually, that's the name of the game for most control-type decks. So uh, Lily's Pokédoll becomes very powerful in those types of decks. You don't really use it in anything else because if you're leaving this in the active, you're simply not attacking. So unless the attack physically moves you to the bench, uh, you can replace that with a, a Lily's Pokédoll. But if for the overwhelming majority of attacks, you're going to be stuck in the active position waiting for your opponent to respond. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to throw it into the balance category. For the same reason we threw Chip Chip Ice Axe in here, um, 
it's just it's really good in control decks but it's just really poor in pretty much everything else so um lily's poke at all is going to sit here for a little while and uh you know it's going to bounce between the a and b depending on what deck that we're playing um it's definitely going to bounce between the b and c for the majority of decks but i think on average it'll be kind of sitting around the b tier all right crushing hammer another kind of control based card uh, when they released these cards, I think a lot of the control options that we had kind of left the format. Uh, these were both from the Sword and Shield era, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Crushing Hammer is actually a, kind of a reprint of, I think, a Crushing Hammer that we had previously, um, but that, that would have left if this Crushing Hammer didn't exist. Crushing Hammer is currently the only way for us to grab or to discard energies from our opponent's Pokemon. This can discard uh, special energies, basic energies, any type of energies from your opponent's Pokemon, even uh, there's even some Pokemon that attaches energies, this removes those as well. So it allows you to decelerate your opponent's board state and it allows you to control the game a little bit better. So even decks that don't play control cards like Lily's Pokedol, Chip Chip, Ice Axe, all these types of cards, um, some cards even like Eternatus and uh, Lucario Melmetal that go a little bit slower with their energy attachments, They'll play this card to bring all of the other decks down to their level. So for that reason, I think this is definitely superior to a lot of the control cards that we have available to us and that it's a little bit more flexible for other decks. Um, Crushing Hammer, definitely the best option to remove energy from, the form, or from our opponent's Pokemon. Now, competing with this, we also have Dangerous Drill, which we've put down into the C tier. Um, Dangerous Drill only works on special energy, so if your opponent is a basic energy type deck, then you're kind of um, you're kind of pigeonholed into only stadium removal and tool removal, which are still good, but it's also pigeonholed into darkness type decks, which is uh, you know too much to overcome. Uh, Crushing Hammer is much more flexible, even though it is on a coin flip. All right, Energy Retrieval. Um, this is a card that's been around for a really long time. It allows you to grab two energies from your discard pile and put them into your hand. So it's like Fire Crystal, but one less, uh, but it can grab any, any type of energy from your discard pile. So for any deck that doesn't play Fire Energy, this is your best uh, energy recovery. And I think that Energy Retrieval is probably gonna go up into the same tier as Fire Crystal just because it is um obviously fire crystal is going to be an auto include in most fire decks but energy retrieval uh i'll say fire decks usually require energy retrieval more just because of how they play most of the time energy retrieval is useful in a lot of decks but usually you just play high enough energy counts where you don't run out of energy in the first place so for that reason i think we're just going to go with putting energy retrieval in the balance here. If we do need uh, retrieval of uh, energy from our discard pile, or if we need to recover resources, then this is probably gonna be the best option for us. <laughs> All right, energy search, probably the most literal name for a card that we currently have. Energy search allows you to search your deck for an, a basic energy. Um, so kind of like uh, energy spinner, but just a little bit less powerful and that on the second turn of the game you don't get to look for three energies. So it actually reads the exact same as energy spinner with a little bit of with a little bit less text. So I think for that reason it's going to go down into the F tier for now just because anytime we would play this we would want to play energy spinner in the next format when energy spinner doesn't exist, uh, energy search will definitely become a a top tier card or at least it'll bounce into the B tier to replace the energy spinner. All right, energy switch is the second option that we have to switch energies from one Pokemon to another. We were previously talking about tag switch, where we got to switch two energies from our tag team Pokemon to any other Pokemon. Energy switch just does one, but it can be from any Pokemon to any Pokemon. Uh, this is much more flexible, and even in some of the tag team decks out there, you still play this card so that you can uh, distribute your resources around the board not only having to throw all of your resources onto a tag team that might be easily knocked out or that might be in danger of being knocked out you can play this to uh, to give you the flexibility of distributing your resources instead of throwing them all onto one and hoping that your opponent can't respond on that 
So I think for that reason, Energy Switch is definitely better than Tag Switch. I'm going to throw it into the B tier. Not all decks require Energy Switching, so it's not going to be necessary in every deck, but for every deck that requires a switching of energies, I think this will be our go-to. If that deck requires a lot of Tag Team Pokemon, then we might look towards Tag Switch. Hyper Potion is probably the best heal that we've ever seen in the Pokemon trading card game. Um, we've seen some item cards just heal 60 outright. Um, we've seen, you know, we, we've had Great Potion. We've had, uh, we, well, we have Great Potion right now. We've had a, uh, I think we've had a Hyper Potion in the past. We've had, we've had a lot of different types of healing options, but nothing quite like Hyper Potion. It allows us to heal 120 damage from any Pokemon that has two or more energies on it. And we have to discard two energies from our from our Pokemon. I think if we're looking for a heal, it's between this and Mallow and Lana. Um, this by itself can erase a turn from your opponent. So if your opponent hits you for 100 damage, or hits you for 80 damage, or even hits you for more than 120 damage, this essentially just resets that turn uh, and allows you to continue... Uh, to power up that Pokemon. Unfortunately, it kind of sets your board state behind because it does discard two energy from the Pokemon that you heal from, but um, it does set your board behind a little bit too much, so when we're looking for healing options, I think I'd much rather discard two cards from my hand and use Mao and Lana than discard two energy from my board and use Hyper Potion. Uh, so unfortunately, I think Hyper Potion is going to fall down a little bit. Um, I don't think we can really put it into the F tier because it is definitely strictly better than Great Potion. And I actually think it might be better than C tier. I'm going to throw it into the B tier just because it is the best healing option we have as far as items are concerned. Uh, and um, yeah, we're just going to throw it into balance because I think it is a very inherently balanced card. All right, Metal Saucer. So Metal types aren't actually a type that is synonymous with energy acceleration um, however in the current format right now metal pokemon are running rampant we have things like zacian we have zamazenta we have lucara and melmetal all of these pokemon are top tier pokemon and and are the main feature of a lot of decks in the current pokemon format and it's mostly thanks to this guy metal saucer allowing you to attach a metal energy to one of your benched metal pokemon so there is a couple of restrictions first of all you have to have a metal energy in the discard to use this card so it's not always useful um, however in the later in the later stages of the game you're almost always looking for this card to accelerate energy to your board and uh and use your super powerful attack um, so i think metal saucer by itself would be uh if Looking at the effect alone, it would be an S tier card, but unfortunately, I think it is going to fall into the A tier because it is only specifically for metal type Pokemon. Kind of the same as Fire Crystal. I think Fire Crystal would by itself be an S tier card, but uh, only works for Fire type Pokemon. All right, so we're going to throw Metal Saucer into the A tier. It is by itself a very, very good card, but I don't think it actually uh, breaks the format like Welder does. Um, so Welder, like I mentioned in the supporter video, went into the S tier. I don't think these cards are good enough by themselves to break into the S tier, but uh, maybe they are. Ordinary Rod is currently our best recovery option. Uh, Re Ordinary Rod allowing you to choose one or both of these effects. You get to put either two Pokemon or two energy cards from your discard pile. I'm sorry, two basic energy cards from your discard pile into your deck. That allows you to recover four cards for one card possibly uh so ordinary rod is absolutely crazy uh as recovery we've seen things like rescue stretcher we've seen super rod we've seen a lot of these types of recovery options just run absolutely rampant they are such a good card i think i'm actually going to put ordinary uh, not all decks unfortunately require recovery of resources so i think i'm going to put it down in the a tier but it, it is definitely deserving on its own to be in the s tier it's just again not used in every deck kind of like the metal saucer and fire crystal all right palpad this has been around for a couple of formats now it's actually uh, it was available in the x and 
the black and white format, I think. Um, it allows you to just put two supporters from your discard pile into your deck. Um, so along with Ordinary Rod, this is another type of uh, recovery option that we have, but purely for supporters. So if I'm playing like a Welder deck where I only play Welders and that's it, uh, this just gives me more access to Welders throughout the game. So something like Baby Lacephalon, something like Mewtwo would love this just because they can reuse their Welders and have the highest out to draw Welders off of like a Poke Gear or off of their draw support Pokemon as possible. I think right now there isn't a whole lot of decks that take advantage of this. I'm going to put it down into the C tier for now just because, again, there aren't, there aren't a whole lot of decks that would utilize this to its fullest potential, but possibly in the future this could see play and move on. Pokemon Catcher. So Pokemon Catcher allows you to, on a coin flip, just your one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon. Now, uh, this card was eroded uh, from the original print of the card where it just allowed you to gust your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active. Um, that was way too disruptive, way, way too game breaking of a card. Uh, so they did erode this and put it on a coin flip, and that's what it is today. So, uh, Pokemon Catcher, right now, unfortunately, we have boss's orders and. Uh, Although Boss's Orders is the only supporter that we get to play, uh, usually Boss's Orders is strong enough to win games. It's strong enough to disrupt, to disrupt your opponent when you need to, and you really don't want to be putting those sorts of disruptive or game-winning effects on a coin flip, unfortunately. Now, we saw earlier that uh, Crushing Hammer is on a coin flip, but usually that's more of like a passive effect. Um, it can be game winning, don't get me wrong, but Catcher is usually the card you're looking for to either uh, very much accelerate the game state in your favor or win the game outright. And uh, unfortunately, Pokemon Catcher isn't necessarily a good enough card to do that. Um, I think gusting options are good enough to where, even though uh, this card is lower power, it could creep into the B tier for me. Um, but I think I'm going to put it into the C tier just because we have so many better Gust options in the format as of right now. Alright, Potion, we've had this card around for a long time since pretty much the beginning of Pokemon. You get to heal 30 damage from one of your Pokemon. Now we saw uh, Hyper Potion does four times this amount of heal, but you do have to decelerate your board state by discarding two energies. Um, there are instances where you use this. I remember Celebi and Venusaur GX used this uh, just because it needed heal options. It needed more heal options than were in the format. And there is definitely a world where that happens again. Unfortunately, in this world right now, we don't we, we have enough heal options where we can kind of forgo this potion. We didn't put great potion into the C tier, so I don't see a reason why we would put regular potion into the uh, C tier. All right, Rare Candy. So the thing about Rare Candy is that, uh, it, well, I guess if you don't know, it allows you to evolve a basic Pokemon to a stage two without needing the stage one. Um, but you do need this card and your evolution card in your hand at the same time. Now, unfortunately, this card can only be played in stage two decks and stage two decks are not good. Uh, right now, Basics are running the format, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, there's not a good reason to play... Well, I guess there's a good reason to play Rare Candy in Stage 2 decks. Obviously, you would play a Rare Candy in almost every Stage 2 deck that you possibly can, but there isn't a whole lot of Stage 2 decks that are good right now. There's a lot of good support Pokemon that are good that are Stage 2s, things like um, Colossal, Rillaboom, Obstagoon even come to mind... Uh, Obviously, Obstagoon is not a support Pokemon necessarily, and, and uh, Decidueye is even kind of in the same realm as Obstagoon, where it's kind of a wall or a uh, kind of a denial-based Pokemon. Um, but Rare Candy, unfortunately, uh, I'm going to put it in the B tier for any Pokemon that we're considering as a Stage 2, but because Stage 2s are so low-powered right now, uh, this would obviously be an S tier card in a stage 2 deck specifically, but I think because stage 2 decks are not prevalent in the format at all, uh, Rare Candy by itself just kind of goes into the balance tier. 
All right, Rotom Bike. Uh, so this is actually a really interesting card. It actually it gives us the feel of Tropical Beach from back in the day. Uh, you will get to draw a card, draw until you have six cards in your hand as an item card. Item based draw is so insanely good. You look at things like Acro Bike, which <laughs> obviously the bike format allows. Uh, bikes allow you to go faster. These cards allow you to go faster as well. Unfortunately, it puts the brakes on right after you draw cards. You have to end your turn when you use this card. Um, an item ending your turn, I don't think it's ever been good. Um, there's been abilities that can end your turn, things like uh, Zacian V come to mind. Uh, there's been supporters that end your turn. Um, there's been stadiums that end your turn. Like I mentioned before, Tropical Beach is probably the best example of that. Um, but items ending your turn, being that you can play as many items as you want during your turn, the fact that this is the last item that you can play, although it gives you a lot of draw sometimes, it kind of leaves, it, it leaves you out dry most of the time. So uh, Rotom Bike for me goes down in the F tier. I will never be using this card as any means of accelerating my deck. All right, Switch. Uh, actually, maybe I misspoke earlier when I said Energy Search was the most literal card. Switch allows us to switch our active with our bench. So um, this is a very obvious card in what it's used for. Right now, Switch effects are running the format um, because we have a lot of basics that require attacking. We're accelerating energies to those basic Pokemon. Usually we have to do that either from the discard pile or we have to play that Pokemon and then switch into the active immediately. Uh, we also have effects like Jirachi and uh, and even just retreating out of the active with a poke from a Pokemon that was knocked out. Switching has always been good since the beginning of Pokemon, and right now I think because we don't have anything like a Float Stone that just allows us to retreat whenever we want to, we have Air Balloon, uh, which we'll be talking about in a little bit, but. Because we don't have anything that just always gives us free retreat, switching effects are absolutely necessary. That's why Bird Keeper is good. That's why Malin Lana is good. And switch, almost, I shouldn't say almost every deck, but uh, most decks right now are playing four copies of switch just to be able to consistently get the active Pokemon and switch it with the uh, attacking Pokemon. So Switch for me, I think because it goes in so many decks and it's so consistent across uh, so many archetypes, I think it's just going to go into the stupid good tier. This is a card that we're going to be considering for every deck that we come in contact with. All right, Capacious Bucket allows us to actually search our deck for two water energy cards and put them into our hand. Right now, this is definitely the best energy search that we that we have in the format. Unfortunately, kind of like Fire Crystal, it's localized to a specific type of energy, uh, and it's only good in water type decks. Uh, so you could use this theoretically in something like an ADP, but usually in ADP you only use one energy for your for your attack, one water energy, and you play a really high count of metal energy so you, so you can power up all of your metal type attackers. So Capacious Bucket isn't really useful in that. Um, the other deck that it's really useful in is Frostmoth. So Frostmoth allowing you to attach as many energy from your hand to your bench Pokemon as you like. Capacious Bucket is going to be really good in those types of decks. Um, and I think for the same reason that we put Fire Crystal into the A tier, I think for any water-based deck right now, because Frostmoth is such a powerful uh, Stage 1 supporting Pokemon, Capacious Bucket is always going to be a consideration whenever we play water energies. All right, full heal uh, re restores all all special conditions on your active Pokemon. You know what also restores all status conditions on your active Pokemon? Switching. So full heal is going to go into the uh, F tier. All right, Nugget is a uh, so if you draw this card off the top of your deck at the beginning of your turn, you get to draw three more cards. So this card can be really good. Unfortunately, it only works at the beginning of your turn, so you can't use it when you uh, when you draw six cards from Dedenne or when you draw six cards from Crobat or uh, even when you're drawing cards from your supporter. This does not work in those scenarios. It only works at the beginning of the turn, which means that you almost have to set it up uh, using something like an Oranguru or um, and, you know maybe Smooth Over from Thunder. Um, 
a nugget unfortunately isn't consistent enough to draw us cards it is inherently pretty good um, but i don't think any deck would play this over a higher supporter count uh, that would allow us to draw cards or a higher supporter pokemon based draw all right and that brings us to scoop up net so scoop up net is uh an, an insane card uh, you get to essentially pick up any Pokemon that is not a Pokemon V or a Pokemon GX, but this does not restrict you from Pokemon, picking up Pokemon EX, which makes this card insanely good in the expanded format. But when we're talking about the standard format, this really restricts you down to your non, your basically your one prize Pokemon. So you get to reset a lot of abilities like Zigzagoon pings. You get to reset Mewtwo's. Uh, it allows you to reset Oranguru. There's a lot of useful, it allows you to reset Jirachis, get Jirachis out of the active. Um, so this almost acts as a switching card in some instances, and it also acts as a, an ability reset for your non-GX, non-V Pokemon. And I think for every deck that plays non-GX and non-V Pokemon, this is probably going to be one of the most considered cards uh, be, behind Switch. I think you play 4 Switch before you play 4 Scoop Up Net, but there might actually be instances where you play 4 Scoop Up Net before 4 Switch. And I think these, the power level of these cards are pretty much the same in the fact that Switch allows you to switch your bench to your active um, for any type of, of Pokemon, your Pokemon V, your Pokemon GX, your Pokemon with 4 retreat costs. Um, this allows you to do that where scoop of net obviously you know it doesn't really matter what the retreat is but it does have to be a non gx non v pokemon a one prize pokemon uh, so these two will get interchanged quite a bit and in most cir circumstances for your for your decks that play one prizers uh, you might actually end up playing both of these so i think they're both on the same level and they're both going to go in the s tier tool scrapper allows you to remove up to two Pokemon tools from your opponent's Pokemon. Um, this is kind of synonymous with Field Blower, except Field Blower also allows you to remove a stadium. So I think Field Blower was used in almost every deck. Field Blower was also used very often because of the card Garbodor. Um, Garbodor shut off pretty much all abilities if it had a tool attached. So that's allowed you to restore your abilities um, in that scenario. We don't have a card like that. Uh, we might have something like that when, when the uh, new evolutions get released in the vivid voltage set but right now i think tool scrapper is kind of niche unless you're trying to uh, remove your opponent's ability to get through an effect or when you're trying to hit through a pokemon that has uh, an hp based tool on it we're going to be discussing a lot of the tool based effects and tool scrapper allows you, allows you to kind of actively remove those effects which is uh, always good to have in the format i think it's just a really balanced card pokemon's had this type of effect around for quite a while to balance a lot of these stronger effects that they put on their tool cards so i think this is always going to be a balanced card it, it'll push into the a tier for certain decks that have to get around that hp or have to get around those effects um, but it's also going to fall into uh, the lower tiers for decks that really don't care so a uh, tool scrapper is kind of a niche card usually you play like one or one at most of these cards uh, but you know there are instances where it gets used moving on to old pc this is definitely a meme uh you flip two coins if both of those coins are heads then uh, you get to go search your deck for a for any card and put it into your hand so it's kind of like computer search but on a double coin flip but you don't have to discard any cards from your hand um We've, I've already mentioned how bad coin flips are uh, in general, so I, I don't think I really have to say too much about old PC. It just kind of falls down into the lower tier. Rare Fossil. Um, I, I love the Fossil mechanic. We mentioned Unidentified Fossil before. I am going to throw it into the same tier because it has the same feasibility as the Unidentified Fossil. You just get to utilize some of the newer Pokemon like Arctazolt, and your Draco Zolt and the other two, uh, which I'm completely blanking on their names, but um, you get to utilize those Pokemon, and uh, they're actually printing some pretty strong effects on those Pokemon. Like Arctazolt allows you to uh, essentially throw Frozen City into play, but you get to stack those. Um, Frozen City allowing you to put two damage counters whenever your opponent attaches an energy. So, for example, if somebody Welder attaches, 
and you have Arctazolt in play, that's 60 damage on that Pokemon. If you have two Arctazolts in play, that's 120 damage that you're putting on your opponent's Pokemon without having to do anything other than getting the Arctazolt into play. And unfortunately, getting the Arctazolt into play is kind of the underlying reason why Rare Fossil is not good. Um, there, are, I think they're going to be printing a lot of interesting effects on the, the Rare Fossil Pokemon, but um, we always have to consider that we can't really search out these Rare Fossils. If there's a card like, um, I think for Unidentified Fossil, there was like a Fossil Excavation map that allowed you to search for those. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have that for Rare Fossils. We don't even have that for Unidentified Fossils right now, so there's just no viability as of, as of the current format. All right, Turbo Patch. I love Turbo Patch, but Pokemon did a really good job at creating an insanely broken card. Uh, I think Turbo Patch, I, I know I'm all kind of overloading the stupid good category, but for any deck that plays a lot of uh, basic energy cards, this allows you to, on a coin flip, I know I'm putting a coin flip card into the S tier, but the effect of the Turbo Patch is so insanely good that it definitely deserves to be up in the S tier. Now we're not always gonna be playing this if we have some other feasible uh, energy acceleration engine, then we're not gonna be playing this card, obviously. But in cards like, eight, or in decks like ADP, this card can be used. Um, in decks like Centiscorch, even Eternatus, you can start using this turbo patch to power up your Pokemon out of nowhere. Unfortunately, it does only go to basic Pokemon. It doesn't actually go to evolution Pokemon, so you can't just throw it directly on a VMAX. However, you can throw it on a V and uh, and then immediately evolve into your VMAX. So this even accelerates to the active position, which for patch cards, I'll, I'll say patch cards, we've had uh, three different patch cards in the past. We've had uh, Dark Patch, we've had Aqua Patch, and now we have uh, the quote unquote Metal Patch, but it's called Metal Saucer. Um, these sorts of effects only typically go to the benched Pokemon. So this card, attaching an energy from your discard, which is insane by itself, to your active Pokemon, not even requiring you to switch out, absolutely insane. Um, so I think this card, for the duration of its existence, will be an S-tier card, unless something comes around that's more powerful than it. And I, I would struggle to believe that Pokemon would be that ignorant to how powerful that effect would be all right yellhorn uh just simply confuses both active pokemon now confusion i mentioned before that confusion with the ear ringing bell or whatever that wasn't supposed to be here uh, i mentioned that confusion isn't really that good of an effect and it's really not but it is kind of a nuisance that it forces your opponent to find a switching out um because if they they can't just retreat out of it because especially if it's their attacking pokemon uh if it's their attacking pokemon they'd have to switch and then retreat out they'd have to find some sort of switching effect at one point and that that actually makes this card because it's on an item and because it doesn't cost anything um that actually makes this card kind of viable um i'll put it into the c tier for now just because it is something that we can consider when we're trying to slow down our opponent uh but it's not inherently powerful or anything like that. It's, it's just like a card that we could play if we're trying to be a nuisance to our opponent in any way. All right, and then we come to our final card. So that's it. So we have five stupid good cards. We have uh, Quick Ball, Reset Stamp, Switch, Scoop of Net, and Turbo Patch. These cards will be a consideration into every deck that we build. Um, the admirable cards will be considerations in niche scenarios. Um, for example, like Great Ball and Pokemon Communication, those will be kind of interchanged with one another, and the other cards really will be added if need be. Balanced will be used uh, in very niche scenarios. I'll say that a lot of these cards have inherently powerful effects. However, they're not over-the-top powerful. Um, things like Poke Gear, Cherish Ball, uh, allowing you to, you know, essentially give you Pokemon-based uh pokemon ability based effects on items is good however if you can't search out these cards then it doesn't really matter you're depending on drawing into these cards and the whole the whole thing behind items is that these are just fillers 
that allow us to make our deck more consistent. So if these de if these cards are just bulking up our deck and not allowing us to further our board state or not slowing down our opponent in any way, then it's it's really just kind of a null point. They're not really going to be used, and that's that's where all of these cards fall into. Credible, I think we just kind of the only time we would play a credible card is when we absolutely require it. Uh, I think things like Unidentified Fossil, Rare Fossil, these are definitely nice. A lot of these cards just fall short with respect to their counterparts that are uh, available in the S, A, and B categories. And the F tier, obviously, we will never see these cards. Or these cards will never see the light of day, most likely. So that's it. So we're going to move on to the tool cards and uh, look at the effects that we can put onto our Pokemon that stay in play. The tool cards are kind of interesting because uh, the tool cards really only impact the Pokemon that they are attached to. So really when we're looking at these tool cards and we're ranking these, we have to gauge them with respect to one another, but also with respect to how they interact with the Pokemon that we're actually playing. All right, so we're gonna start off here with buff padding. So buff padding allows us to give uh, the Pokemon 50 HP if it has exactly for retreat cost not more not less so uh honestly we have a better card that we're going to be going over in a little bit called cape of toughness and uh 50 hp is definitely a really good number uh, obviously high eight high retreat cost pokemon already have high hp as it is so this usually just makes tanky pokemon more tanky but like i said we do have better options in the format as of right now um, now, if you're comparing this to Cape of Toughness, uh, Cape of Toughness can only be played on basic Pokemon, and it cannot be played on GX Pokemon. All right, so those are the two restrictions that buff padding kind of gets around. The Obviously, the restriction just being that uh, the, the Pokemon has to have four retreat costs. So I think I'm going to throw this into the C tier just because it, it is viable uh, in certain archetypes. Uh, it can be attached to GX Pokemon, which is great. But uh, I think in most cases, the Cape of Toughness is just going to be a better alternative for us. Now moving on to the Fairy Charm. Moving on to the Grass Memory, and uh, actually I'm going to throw Water Memory into this as well. Metal Goggles uh, reduces 30 damage to your Metal-type Pokemon, and, uh, and prevents any damage counters from being placed on those Pokemon from your opponent's attacks. So this was really good uh, for Metal Pokemon against things like Dragapult. Uh, it, when the metal frying pan was legal, but now that metal frying pan isn't legal, this is more of just kind of an alternative for um, really just reducing the 30 damage. The the extra text doesn't really do anything for us. We're almost always just using this for the 30 damage reduction. And I think metal Pokemon, uh, Luka Metal, Zacian, Zamazenta, uh, even some of the others coming out of the next set are definitely going to be pushed into a higher tier just because of how much weakness they're hitting uh, and how much viability they're going to get because of uh, their inherent tankiness due to the tools that they have, such as Metal Goggles. I'm going to throw Metal Goggles up into the air tier just because it is a specialized card for the metal type Pokemon. It isn't available for all of the Pokemon, but whenever we make a deck that is focused around metal type Pokemon, I think whenever we throw a Metal Saucer into a deck, uh, we're always going to be looking at this card to see if this is something that, that we want to be uh, playing. All right, moving on to Beast Bringer. Uh, Beast Bringer allows you to grab an extra prize card when you knock out your opponent's Pokemon EX or DX, and you have all six prize cards still remaining. Uh, so a lot of kind of restrictions on this card, but I think um, I think Plus Baby Lacephalon can actually put this into good use still. Uh, it's not completely unviable, so I don't think I want to throw it down in the F tier. I think I'm going to put it in C tier, just because it is slightly viable in one single deck. Um, and that's pretty much how this is going to work. There aren't that many tools in general, so we're going to be a little bit uh, less conservative with uh, where we put these cards. As long as they're slightly viable, we'll throw them into the credible category. So Beast Bringer, just a kind of considerable, I guess. Metal Core Barrier, another tool for the Metal-type decks. The Metal-type Pokemon this is attached to 
takes uh, 80 less damage from your opponent's attacks. However, it gets discarded at the end of the turn. So it's almost like a Bursting Balloon type effect. It's like a Giant Bomb effect that we're going to be going over in just a little bit. But it's only for Metal-type Pokemon, and I think most Metal-type Pokemon are just going to play Metal Goggles over this, just because Metal Goggles gives them consistent damage reduction rather than just a one-turn 80, 80 damage reduction. Um, this could be used in some capacity if Metal Goggles wasn't around, uh, but unfortunately I think because Metal Goggles is around, this just gets thrown down into the F tier. There is, I don't think there's ever a world where that extra 50 damage reduction for one turn uh, overrides the 30, possibly 60, possibly even 90 damage reduction that stays on the, the active, or on the metal type Pokemon. Alright, Stealthy Hood. Uh, I think this is actually a super balanced card. Uh, it's just Pokemon's way of saying that if there's any obnoxious abilities in the format, uh, we can just kind of ignore those from... Uh, you know, any Pokemon this is attached to just gets to ignore your opponent's abilities uh, done to that Pokemon. Obviously, it doesn't just negate all abilities or anything like that. It just negates the abilities done to that Pokemon. Um, so, notoriously, this was played in Mewtwo and Mew GX to negate the Mimikyu GX. Uh, this it, it just allowed you to attack, essentially. Uh, so... There are definitely uses for it. I think I'm going to throw it into the balance tier just because it's something that I'm going to consider every time I'm playing a deck. Whenever I'm trying to build something and uh, there's an ability that I'm worried about, uh, I can always look towards Stealthy Hood. All right, the Z Crystals. All right, Giant Bomb. I'm actually a huge fan of this card. Uh, so Giant Bomb uh, allows you to, if you get hit by your opponent for more than 180 damage, you get to reflect 10 damage counters onto the onto the defending Pokemon. Unfortunately, this gets discarded at the end of the turn, so it's only a one-turn viability. But what you can do is you can sit a Pokemon up in the active, and you can tank with it. Um, and if you tank, then you're doing damage. So you almost essentially add 100 damage if you expect to take 100, 180 damage uh, while your Pokemon's in the active spot. So... Uh, this could be good in something like a Mewtwo. This could be good in something like a uh, uh, Luka Metal. Eh, I guess you'd probably just put Metal Goggles instead of this. But, uh, you, you know, these types of tanking decks, I think, would really like Giant Bomb. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in the A tier. I really think this card is going to take off in the next format uh, as some sort of damage modification. All right, Karate Belt allows you to, if you're down on prize cards... Uh, it allows your Pokemon to require one less fighting energy to attack some of the new VMAX Pokemon that have uh, pretty costly energy requirements would like this card. Um, and I think this was played also in uh, Garchomp and Giratina GX, the, uh, the one with Myth Magius that's now banned. Uh, so there are niche uses for it. But unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to throw it down in C. It's kind of between the B and C categories. It is an inherently powerful effect, but it is not unfortunately good enough to be pushed into any sort of uh, higher viability. All right, U-turn board. One of two tools that we have to modify the retreat cost of our Pokemon. So U-turn board allows us to... Uh, reduce our Pokemon's retreat cost by one, and when this card is discarded from play, it comes back to your hand. Uh, so you just get to reuse this over and over again. It never really gets discarded unless you discard it from your hand using like a Professor Sycamore, or I'm sorry, a, a Professor's Research, or some other discarding effect, um, which I don't think you would ever do. You would just attach this anyways. Um, I think U-Turn Board definitely has viability in certain decks. I think Mad Party loves this because most of their, po I think almost all Pokemon in that deck have one retreat cost. Um, now this does get kind of disrupted by the Absol that's in the format. So if you have uh, all one, one retreat cost Pokemon, if you had zero retreat cost Pokemon, you probably wouldn't be playing this. <laughs> so if you have one retreat cost Pokemon, then uh, Absol puts them up to two and requires and forces a, an energy attachment or something like that. So this gets kind of thwarted by the Absol tech, but um, I think I'm going to throw it into the balance category just because it is super viable for certain decks. 
and it stays around so it's just a, a consistent resource that we can use to uh, reduce our retreat cost and get some switching effects which are super critical in the format all right beastite beastite allows us to uh this is another ultra beast card so, so the the ultra beast cards usually go down in, in the lower tier somewhere i think this card is actually going to go down in the f tier beastite allowing us to uh you know depending on how many prize cards our opponents have taken we get to do 10 extra damage with our ultra beast so you, you're thinking something like a, a baby buzzwell uh or a um Buzzwell Faramosa, or even like a Buzzwell GX and Expanded, or something like that. Um, these could, those, those types of cards could use this technically, but there are definitely just better options in the format, uh, in, in those respective formats for damage modification, so I don't think Beastite will ever see play. Island Challenge Amulet. Uh, it reduces your Pokemon GX and EX HP by 100. And it allows them to give one less prize card. Um, now this can actually be really good for tag team GXs. And the reason for that is because uh, if you put this on one of your tag teams, then your opponent takes one less prize card for knocking them out. And then, uh, and then they have to knock out two more tag teams, theoretically. So if you're playing just like a quad tag team deck, something like a Sylveon Gardevoir or something like a... Um, like a Luka medal from back in the day, then this could be really useful. And in nowadays, if there is ever a time where you're just playing VMAX Pokemon, never mind scratch that, this does not work on VMAX Pokemon. Uh, there is actually a tool coming out in the next set that kind of does the same thing, but it is not, um, this particular tool is not useful on them. I don't think this, uh, this tool ever really comes into viability, so I think I'm going to throw it down into the it's definitely between C and F. I think I'm going to throw it into the C just because it does have some prize card manipulation potential. But uh, I think when you commit resources to a GX or an EX Pokemon, you really want them to survive, and taking away 100 HP is definitely not the way to let them survive. Now, this could be thrown on like a Dedenne, so that it only gives up one prize card instead of two. I guess that's uh, really a, the only viable uh, reason why you would play this. All right, jumping into the sun and or I'm sorry, the sword and shield cards. Uh, the first of which being air balloon. I think air balloon is probably one of the most powerful tools we have in the format. It's it gives the feeling of floatstone from back in the X Y era, uh, and even before that in the black and white era. I think air balloon right now is. I think it's arguable, but uh, air balloon is definitely one of the most strong. Uh, Pokemon tools that we have currently. Uh, biggest retreat manipulation. Alright, so Big Charm uh, actually just gives any Pokemon, there's no restrictions on this, it gives any Pokemon plus 30 HP, which is actually pretty crazy. I mean, we can we already have these huge HP Pokemon in the format with the VMAXs, the tag teams, we can even boost those a little bit higher. Um, now, one thing to note is that Big Charm can be uh, attached to GX Pokemon, whereas uh, what we're going to be talking about later, the Cape of Toughness cannot. So this this and Cape of Toughness, I think, are where we're going to look for when we go to, to modify our Pokemon's HP. Uh, now, Big Charm actually gives us kind of the feel of Fighting Fury Belt from a while ago. Um, it only buffs 30 HP, but it doesn't do the extra 10 damage. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like Pokemon <laughs> balancing that a little bit more. This is a card that we're going to look for uh, almost always when we're going to try and tank a hit or when we're trying to fix numbers for ourselves in the Pokemon that are in our decks. All right, Lucky Egg. I, this this card was actually really promising when it first came out. Lucky Egg just allowing you to, when your Pokemon gets knocked out, you get to draw up to seven cards. So it's almost like a Tropical Beach effect, but only for the Pokemon that uh, gets knocked out. So your opponent can gust around this. Um, your, your opponent can play around this. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get around this card, especially with boss's orders and uh, great catcher and uh, Pokemon catcher even. There's a lot of gust in the format, so I think this gets kind of pushed out of viability. If boss's orders didn't exist, then uh, I think this card would actually be really good. Uh, this was played in the, um, in the last format, or maybe two formats ago. Yeah, I think two formats ago. 
when Baby Blacephalon got really big. Uh, this was played in Baby Blacephalon to make sure to draw out of those reset stamps late game. So uh, it's definitely between B and C. I think I'm going to throw it down in C just because there is so much gust in the current format. All right, Lumberry and Citrus Berry. I don't think it's anybody's surprised. If you even know what these cards are, then kudos to you. Vitality Band. All right, our only, currently our only damage modification via, uh, via tool card, direct modification, I should say. Uh, so th you have to compare this to like a Zigzagoon Ping. When you're, when you're looking at this card, you have to look at, you know, am I playing Zigzagoons? Is there a possibility to play Zigzagoon Scoop Ups? If I'm playing Zigzagoon Scoop Ups, I'm not going to play this card because there's just no reason why, uh, why I should need 10 extra damage with a tool card when I can have up to 50 extra damage with a Zigzagoon and four Scoop Ups. So I think uh, Vitality Band is definitely a super balanced card. It's half of a Muscle Band from back in the day uh, we have a lot of even though our hp has pretty much doubled from that point uh, the power modification here is half uh, so pokemon i think really just realizing that uh, 10 damage or 20 damage was too much and you even had like choice band which allowed you to modify 30 damage against the uh, ex and gx pokemon so it's it, i think it's just pokemon's way of saying that we don't need that much modification in the format um, and I think in the next format there is a pretty big damage modifier coming out, but uh, Pokemon I think is doing a good job of kind of taming that and allowing us to give a little bit more diversity to our decks and, uh, and the tools that we have to uh, modify our damage. All right. Now I mentioned that Vitality Ban was kind of the way to, the only way to modify damage. Burning Scarf kind of falls into that category as well, but only for Fire Pokemon. Um, so if the far right Pokemon this card is attached to is damaged, then your opponent is burned. Uh, burned, first of all, is a horrible effect. Even if your opponent flips uh, Tails to remove the burn, they can still switch out of it. Uh, I think status conditions right now are just horrible because of the amount of switching outs that we have. Uh, so I think I'm going to throw this down. Uh, it's definitely between C and F. I'm going to throw it down into F. I don't think this card ever sees play. All right, Curse Shovel. Uh, I'm actually a huge fan of this. I, you know, coming into the Sword and Shield, I wasn't a huge fan of Mill. I, I never was. Um, but actually, I've kind of fallen into some sort of groove with Mill. Uh, right now, all we have is things like Toxtricity. We have Palo Sand. Yeah, I, I think Curse Shovel. If we're going for a Mill deck, is definitely the card we look after, look out to. We probably put three or four of these automatically in that deck. But I think I'm going to throw it into the balance tier just for that purpose. The big parasol actually having some really powerful text on it, uh, even though it hasn't seen a whole lot of play. As long as the Pokemon this is attached to is in the active, then you get to ignore the effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon done to all of your Pokemon. So not this is probably one of the only tools that's ever prevented anything to other Pokemon on your field. Uh, so this is actually, I, I think this is actually a really powerful card. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't prevent against Gust. It doesn't prevent, it, your your opponent can still manipulate your field if they have the cards to do so, um, but they just can't do anything to your, your Pokemon. I think the only deck that's played this card right now is the Decidui Obstagoon deck, and that was just to uh, wall off the Mewtwo and Mew's Muck and Alolan Muck's attack, I think. Um, so it, it, it just allows you to get around certain niche scenarios, but I think in the future, if we do get a huge attack that's supposed to impact your entire field, then uh, Big Parasol could definitely be pushed into viability, and for that reason, I'm going to put it into the balance category. All right, Cape of Toughness. Uh, so Cape of Toughness, I, I've mentioned this a couple of times now, is probably the best modification for HP that we've had in quite some time allows us to give our basic Pokemon in play that are not GX Pokemon plus 50 HP. Uh, so this this is honestly uh, this is honestly a, a great card. I think um, I, I would say it's a little bit on the overbalanced side. I, I think 50 HP, especially in a format right now, is definitely pushing it. Luckily, Pokemon kind of noticed that. 
uh, we were getting frustrated with the, the high HPs of the new VMAX Pokemon, so they did put the text that this can only be attached to basic Pokemon, but I think for any any basic deck, any any sort of like maybe like a, a like a Wailord V, like the, the new Wailord V coming out, they would love this card because uh, you're just giving 50 HP for really no no downfall. So I think if we want to modify HP, Big Charm and Cape of Toughness kind of fall into the same power category. Uh, Big Charm obviously not having as much restriction, whereas Cape of Toughness can only be put on certain Pokemon. So those two, are, I think, are just going to be put side by side with one another. All right, so uh, kind of rounding things out with the Struggle Gloves. Struggle Gallop's kind of a card that allows you to tech against decks that have teched against you. <laughs> if your opponent would hit you for weakness, then this opponent does, this Pokemon does 30 damage to that defending Pokemon. This can be good under certain scenarios. I think it's more niche than anything, so I think I'm going to throw it into the credible category. There's, I can definitely see scenarios where this, is, this could be good, um, so I definitely would put maybe like one or two in my binder. But um, I don't think this is ever a card that goes into a lot of decks. We might see it in one or two decks going forward. And that is everything. So thank you, everyone, for watching uh, Muffin Man Builds. And uh, again, I'm Alex Baker. This was a fantastic representation of the current format of Team Up to Darkness Blaze as far as the items and tools are concerned. So uh, go ahead and check out the supporter list that I've already done. And uh, obviously I'm going to be doing the other types of trainers as well as the support Pokemon and the major Pokemon in the current format in future videos. Leave a like down below if you did like this video. Let me know if uh, you disagree with anything I've put up here or if you think there's anything I should improve in the future. Yeah, thank you for watching. See ya.